Hi guys and welcome back to the channel Health Dominance. Anthony here. Please remember to like and subscribe and also click that notification bell if you're enjoying what you're seeing and want to see more. Coming up, the second semi-final for the Super League Playoffs 2021 between Saints and Leeds Rhinos. So here we are ladies and gentlemen, the second game of the semi-finals for who will play in the grand final against Catalan Dragons after their impressive win yesterday. Some early team news involved uh, in this before we look at the team news itself. Um, St. Helens are at full strength except the, the long-term injury victims of Theo Farge and James Bentley. Back rower Sione Metaltia is fit after sitting out the last game with a leg injury while the prop Agnesius Patti has served his two-match suspension. Leeds are likely to stick with the team that won at Wigan after coach Agar named an unchanged 21-man squad although he has options to draft in including Mella, King Vunayawa, Jack Broadbent and Morgan Gallant who were all laughed out of last week's 17. So it's interesting though, these early games, or these early calls for team news, and when we go through the team news, we can see who actually made it into the squad. But it's going to be a good one. We hear it's a full house also at the Tosley Wicked Stadium tonight. Let's see how we get on. So here are the teams, starting with St. Helens. We have Coot, Mekinson, Nagama, Percival, Grace, Lomax, who comes in for Wellsby, who drops down to the bench. Lewis Dodd, Wormsley, possibly a Man of Shield, um, Man of Steel nominee, um, with his marauding forward runs and his goal forward for the Saints side. Roby, Lees, Metautia comes back into the starting lineup. Bachelor and Knowles. LMS, Amor and Passy are the forwards on the bench. And there is only one change from what would expectedly be the starting 17 for St. Helens. And that, well, bless Theo Farge and John Bentley. And now for the Leeds Rhinos. We have Myla, Briscoe, Newman, Tom Briscoe, and Hanley in the back five. Thomas, uh, Robert Louis, Cruz Leeming, and all in the backs and, and the half backs being Louis and Leeming. Mikhail Ejelatsky and uh, Matt Pryor are the, for, the starting forwards with Brad Dwyer in a hooker. With Donaldson and Martin, Martin who is going to continue his kicking efforts throughout the entire game, and uh, King Tatavano being at 13, who's looking to make up for lost time according to all reports. Then on the bench we have Comrade Hurrell, Thompson, Tom Holroyd and Smith to round out the unchanged Leeds Rhino side. Well it was an interesting first half when we came to the Saints versus Leeds as <laughs> it was all kicking off from moment one. So Saints uh, led, started the game by kicking off to Leeds and Leeds returned on the fourth tackle and decided to kick. Lachlan Coote drops that kick in an excellent position for Leeds. And Leeds get inside the uh, 10 meters and Louis' second kick is a grubber which just dribbles out of, out of the dead ball line. On the fourth minute, a Saints return with excellent offloads and direct running gets Leeds on the back foot. And a 10 meter grubber uh, is fielded in play after it hits the post by Myler. Uh, Saints are in on the fifth minute with a try for Regan Grace. They, the Saints decided to overload the left hand edge and well, the entire left-hand side of the pitch, to be honest, with all their players and the leads are slow to respond. And it goes through the hands of Dodd and Lomax before it reaches Lock on Coop, who spins out a long pass to the left wing for Regan Grace, who has the strength and pace to go over in the left-hand corner. Coot unfortunately misses the extras. 
Leeds get the first six again on the eighth minute due to hands on the ball, but it comes to nothing as the heart as on halfway, Leeming's pass goes behind two of his defenders, got two of his attackers, and goes out of the left touch. Notice of play, Saints are running harder and faster than Leeds in this first 10 minutes. Oletsky is on hand to stop a grubber causing issues, and Saints are called offside on the 12th minute. The kick through doesn't reach touch, though, because they have... Uh, because they went for touch from the offside uh, and Hash Hanley criminally doesn't find touch. One thing though, Lachlan Coote was superb in pushing the ball back into touch for Regan Grace and that effort earned Saints a penalty due to a, um, a t almost a tip tackle on Regan Grace. Was a, I say almost as he was up and brought back down. Not properly though, but it wasn't the full on meal, shall we say that? <sighs> then another penalty comes along as Reese Martin has hands on the ball um, in the tackle. So Saints decide out from this penalty, they'll get two. And they do, and extend their lead to 6-0. On the 17th minute, the last, on the last tackle, Saints give away a tackle uh, well, a penalty, as Alex Wormsley strips the, the ball from Oleski's uh, grasp while he's on the floor. Leeds attack comes to nothing again, with no setup plays or structure so far in this entire game for the Rhinos. Tom Briscoe is caught with Lachlan Coop running at him on the 20th minute, and his teammates have just lost two tackles previously. And as Lachlan Coote is running out of Briscoe, as mentioned, he is caught high by Briscoe for a penalty. Briscoe, Tom Briscoe, is sent for 10 minutes um, to cool down. Saints decide to go for another two. And Lachlan Coote makes no mistake, and the lead is up to 8 points to nil. Leeds need to step up quickly or this scoreline is going to get ugly is what I wrote here. 23 minutes gone and off the back of two monster Wormsley runs and two six again calls. Roby runs up the line, hits and spins at the defence into a tizzy and then he, dis then he reaches over the line with the ball for a try. Wormsley uh, at this point has set up and been as exceptional with 100 meters run, but what? But Roby's there in the right place at the right time to get the ball so that he can score the, his first try of the finals. Coote adds the two, and now the score is up to 14 points to nil. On the 29th minute, Alex Wormsley is pulled off for a break, pulled off the field. He has covered over 125 metres in that 29 metre minute spell. Could be 250, 300 by the end of the game. Wow. Uh, Luke Briscoe is getting is returning the ball after a Reese Martin great run. To be fair, it was the effort that Reese Martin puts in that's put this impetus. And he's slipping in the tackle. And Metaltia catches him accidentally on the head with a tough tackle. The referee deems that uh, contact with force, so Metaltia is sent for 10 minutes as well. Still, we come to the 32nd minute and Leeds are keep consistently doing one out rugby league. No support, no backup, no real structure. But after returning a, uh, on the return set on the 34th minute, a huge hit by Tetavano and Thompson on uh, Ignatius Passy gives lead the ch leads the chance to recover the ball, and that they do, and they get a six again and a penalty. It's a Leeds base in. The 20 metre line of the Saints of the Saints are. And they should be camps down there. 
but soon after these penalties and six agains are given, the ball is lost after after a loose pass finds Louis McCarthy Scarsbrook. And not and just to confound things even further, Leeds have been penalised for a penalty due to a one-on-one -on -one strip. There are shoots of recovery there from Leeds as they started to get some structure together and get um, due to Cameron Smith being on the pitch. But it's not just him, it's also Bolding Thompson and the change of ball would seem to be sparking some life into this Leeds team. On the 37 minutes, Leeds have got the ball while still being an extra man up inside the Saints 20 meter line after a break and a penalty that uh, due to some interference from St. Helens. And they go down the left edge uh, and Leeds to choose to attack um, with Myler and Myler has enough strength to barge himself over the line and spin over and the referee says that he got some, gets the ball down but calls it upstairs to the video referee for confirmation. The referee, the video referee gives the try and Leeds are back in it at 14 points to 4. Reese Martin, who's been successful with kicks all the way through this season, fails to add the extras. And that's how we go into half time, 14 points to 4. And it's going to be an exciting second half if this is the recovery that Leeds need to do. So we go into our second half of the game and there has been a couple of messages ringed out by the coaches. First of all, Christian Wolf says that his Saints side have been excellent and need to replicate what they've done and they'll win the game uh, from what they did in the first half. They were a better team, so why not? Why not just sing them out with that? Uh, Richard Agar on the other hand said that they were static, erratic and need to improve to be much better in this second half or they can kiss their chances of winning the league uh, winning the game and get into the grand final goodbye and it doesn't take too long for Leeds to have an impact after the kickoff for the second half as Leeds are down to 12 men this time after a swinging falling arm on the left on the left wing against Lachlan Coote's head I have my comments about Lachlan Coote but this has been given throughout the entire game for a sim binning for, and it was given by Donald, uh, to Donaldson and he had to go sit down for 10 minutes. Luaya hammers into a great tackle so Leeds have been up in the in intensity from half time uh, on, and it's on Regan Grace but the referee gives a penalty for a flop by Newman. This after a St. Helens didn't like the tackle, even though there was nothing wrong with it. And they started pushing and shoving Robert Louis. It was a great shot. It did it wasn't a penal it wasn't the thing that was penalised. It was penalised by for the flop by Aaron Newman. Problem was, the tackle wasn't complete either. Robert Louis didn't touch the man afterwards. It was Harry Newman. Anyway. But they give the Saint the penalty. Saints the penalty. Saints decided to start probing uh, against the twelve men, uh, and, and and Leeds defence uh, is just holding up, mainly in part mainly due to Robert Louis rushing in defence, acting, putting some extra effort into it. On the 49th minute, though, Saints are called offside on a returning Saints set after they cleared up that that bit beforehand and they are still being pinned back into their own half they cleared the ball from 25 meters out with a kick and it just about got into the 40 of St. Allen's and this gives Saints a lot of impetus to go forward and on the third tackle Saints are in the uh, Leeds 15 meter line and Peter Mat uh, sorry Sioni Mataltia is picking up the ball at dummy half and he runs at the Leeds defence just two bumps to the left with a pass of uh, dummy in the pass and then the third one goes to Percival who, who burrows his way and reaches for the trial line which is scored 
to send the scores up to 18 points to 4. It stays like that because Lock and Coop could not add the extra 2. On the 52nd minute, a dominant passy drive for Saints causes a 6 again after 3 attempts of lead tackle, Leeds tacklers trying to get him down. Once in the 20, once on the 30 and once at 35 metres. But they all kept falling away, not putting him down. But when they did finally get to him, they laid on too long and they got a set, uh, got a set restart. A couple of tackles later, Jack Wellsby sees the gap behind the uh, behind the uh, defensive line and kicks for the gap. He tries to chase down his own kick, but unfortunately it runs out. There is an issue though, because straight after this, uh, on the tap, a couple of tackles later again, Conrad Hurrell run, uh, gets into a position where Wellsby has to tackle him. And Wellsby comes off second best with his right shoulder having, an inj having a problem. That's not good. Um, he won't be back for the rest of the night. He's... <sighs> Leeds cough up the possession on the 59th minute in the centre of the field from their own play the ball. Basic error. They just drop it. It wasn't all, it wasn't stripped or anything like that. They just drop it. And this puts Saints back on the attack. And they go right this time with their attacking force of Lomax and Coot. Lomax finding Coot uh, who draws in Hurl. Uh, who just wants to tackle <laughs> tackle Coot. Just wants to tackle him. But it leaves a gap on the Gamma to run through to score. Coot adds the two to make it 24 points to four. Leeds, by the 62nd, uh, 66 minutes, so, sorry, Leeds cough, um, start to attack the Saints and they get a penalty inside the uh, Saints 20 meter line uh, for a shoulder charge, a late one by Joe Batchelor. Yeah, the ball had gone, completely gone, and he still stuck his shoulder in and the referee saw it quite early, to his credit said that's a penalty that's a penalty you could hear him shout it and he sends bachelor to the 10 minutes because it's a late shoulder charge what can you do letter of the law this gives Leeds a little bit of a chance as they decide to go left first of all and then a quick shift right and it leaves uh, Leeming and Briscoe uh, on the right hand edge and Leeming finds uh, Luke Briscoe who has a run into the corner just to do and he gets there the referee checks it and it's confirmed that he scores uh, Leeds second try of the game but unfortunately Rhys Martin again misses the kick so the score is 24 points to 8 bad news for Leeds continues as uh, Cameron Smith was said to be not returning on the 70th minute for the Leeds side um, due to a knee injury and when you think Saints has started to play it safe after that try, here comes Alex Wormsley, who does a marauding run that's hard and direct through the middle of the pitch and throws a fantastic offload to Lomax. Unfortunately, it doesn't get him get Lomax any extra yards, but it shows what Wormsley has been doing all the way through the season. is hard running and then getting people around him so that he can reproduce ball but in that set the ball is uh, the last tackle the ball is uh, put up for a bomb but it's charged down by the Lee's defense fortuitously it bounces for Regan Grace who between himself and Mark Percival finds a gap for Mark Percival to score his second try of the game. Coot adds the extras to make it 30, 30 points to 8. And on the 77th minute, the coup de grace. Saints are going to the Old Trafford. They work an overlap on the left edge through um, Lomax, who's been at the heart of everything this entire game. Everything go forward from Saints. Lomax has been there or thereabouts. And Grace has got a free run towards the line, which all of a sudden starts to be shut down by the fullback of Leeds, Richie Myler. 
but Regan Gray smoothly steps off his left foot, back inside and around Myla for her try. Coot adds the second, uh, his two-pointer, and that is finishes the scoring. And it's St. Helens that are going to Old Trafford with a 36 points to 8 victory against Leeds Rhino. So, ladies and gentlemen, who do you think is my player of the match for this game? Um, it could be um, Alex Wormsley, because he made an impact every time that he went through a Leeds defence. Made 125 metres in the first half alone, running with the ball. Um, it could be Percival, two tries. It could be Grace, two tries. It could be Lachlan Coote, who bombed a... Well, no. I'm sorry, but Lachlan Coote is not my man of the match. He was below the par of what I... of the player who was the real best man in the game. And if anyone wants to tell me otherwise, I'll fight him. And it is Johnny Lomax. He was at the heart of everything go forward for... Um, St. Helens. Every attack that you see, he's there or thereabouts. Not kidding. He's the first one celebrating. If you have a look as well. Um, Wormsley's making a barnstorming run. Who's there on the inside to get the pass? Johnny Lomax. Don't know about you, but out of the players in the game, he had more about him. I think he set up two tries himself as well. So, yeah, don't forget about that guy because he was really, really good. Really good tonight. I may disagree, but definitely not cool. But my play of the match, Johnny Lomax of St. Owens. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. The grand final is all set as it's the Catalan Dragons versus St. Helens on Saturday, the 19th of October. Kickoff, 6 p.m. at Old Trafford for the Betfred Super League grand final. And that, if all things are being even, will be the final domestic rugby league game for the top tiers. Depending on how the NRL Grand Final goes. <laughs> is it being suspended? Or is it going to be played? Or is it going to move to Townsville? Just don't know. But, we've got a showpiece, ladies and gentlemen. Tell me in the comments who's going to win it. Is the Dragons going to be the newest name to add to the Super League trophy? The first, first time winner since 2003. 17 years. It'll be a spectacle. It'll be a good game no matter what. I know that a lot of people are voting against Saints not being in, uh, being the winners, but don't ever count them out. They were our second in the league for a reason, and I'm sure that they won't slip like they did against the Catalans at Magic Weekend. But that will be their motivation. The Dragons, they're doing it for all rugby league. The outsiders, the underdogs, and also us expansionists. I really do hope they win. They would, it would be egg on the face if something like that happens and anything ever happens to Catalan Dragons. I really hope that nothing does. We need teams like Catalan. We need the expansionists, and we need all the work that's been going into France to yield all the fruit that. Our labour of sales. But thank you very much for watching. Please remember, like, subscribe, and share this video worldwide. We need you to grow our sport. Thank you for all the new supporters. Thank you for all the new subscribers. Share, share, share the video. In the meantime, I will see you in the next video. All the best. Stay safe. Bye for now.